Feather Stampers. This is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations here with another Facebook Live. I want to welcome you here um, to my desk as we're going to craft out a Christmas card today. Um, if you are a little bit behind and you don't have your Christmas cards done yet, this is a very quick and easy card. And I also wanted to point out this particular bundle because um, Pine Tree Punch is on low inventory and we want to make sure that if you have this on your wish list that you order it very soon. We have already run out of a few different things and so you want to be sure to jump on that. We have already sold out of the Brightly Gleaming um, Designer Series paper and the Frosted designer series paper and the moose punch those have already exhausted their supply and they are no longer available we are here today to do this card this is our perfectly plaid pine tree card using what is a low inventory item so if you're looking to get the pine tree punch get it very very soon oh hi Chrissy first time watching. That's awesome. I hope you enjoy today's card. Um, we're going to be making it using the stamp apparatus. I want to show a couple little tricks with that. Um, we are using the perfectly plaid bundle, so the stamp set and the pine tree punch. Um, I'm starting out with a whisper white card base, so eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. And this is out of the thick Whisper White. So this is an 80 pound white. And I'm gonna follow that up with a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of Cherry Cobbler. And then I'm gonna use our designer series paper over that. This is the plaid designer series paper. It's gorgeous. Um, it has all plaids on one side. This has actually got a gold foil accent in the middle. And then of course I got another pattern on the other side. And this is using Night of Navy and Shaded Spruce. So I chose to use my other layer as Shaded Spruce. And then I have a layer of Whisper White. So we're going to layer that together. Um, so we can start out by adhering most of this together. Let me grab my... This is my adhesive holder. I needed to dig out my snail. If you're interested in how to make that, I do have another video um, where we did make that. Anybody have any exciting plans for Thanksgiving? I believe we're going to go over to Mark's cousin's house. Um, I wish I was seeing my own kids, but they're busy with their own lives. I did get to see my son last week when I went down to Las Vegas for On Stage. He and his family live down there because um, he and his wife both work for the VA. They have wonderful jobs, so it kind of sticks them in that area. As much as I miss them, I am happy they're doing well. If you haven't seen our stamp apparatus yet, it's pretty awesome. It's a stamp placement tool, and it has two plates. I actually don't have one of them on and then both plates come out and they're reversible so you can flip them around and you can also move them on a hinge um, so that you can stamp perfectly in a line. So if you have something where you're looking to um, place a sentiment evenly and lined up perfectly, the stamp apparatus is the way to go. And I don't know if you know or if you've seen in the catalog, they have this new foam mat that's um, kind of plasticky on this side, so it's much easier to clean. You can choose to use the um, standard paper inserts, or you can use this, or both. Um, I'm going to come in here and show you how we're going to line up a sentiment. There are two magnets on the back, and I have them wrapped in duct tape. Now the reason for this is these magnets are super strong and if the two of them happen to snap together they do have a tendency to break and so if they are wrapped in duct tape if it did break that hold all the pieces together because I understand they're sharp um, but this also gives us a something to hang on to when you're trying to pull it off of the base. 
Now when I go to place the sentiment, I know that I want it on this side. And I can eyeball it and pick it up. Now one of the things I want to make sure and check is there are grid lines across here. And so I can make sure that my, there we go, now you can see them sorta, that my sentiment is evenly lined up so that it's not cattywampus, and it is. And then if you have a stamp case, that is the perfect height for putting under here so that when you go to ink up your stamp, and I'm gonna do this kind of messy um, on purpose, um, so see how this did not get that section? I kind of like missed part of the C there. It's not quite as dark as we want it to be. And that's another reason to use the Stamparatus. If you have things that um, you want like a silhouette or something super dark, you can stamp multiple times and it goes in exactly the same spot. So now I'm able to put the Merry Christmas in there a second time and now it darkened it all up. So that's what I needed for that. And then I'm going to punch out this tree here. And I'm gonna use the pine tree punch for that. Oh, Australia, that's cool. How fun. Um, this can be just put in here and you can randomly punch, you know, and hopefully I would get it in the right spot. Or you can take and punch out one of the trees and then you can figure out where you want it. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back. It doesn't take much because I just want it to stay put while I punch. And so say that's where I've decided I want my tree to be. So now I've made sure that I've got it perfectly aligned where I want it. And then I'm going to use the punch and line it up with the tree. Apparently it's not even on both sides. Sorry about that, I didn't realize that. I thought it was symmetrical, but apparently it's not. So you wanna make sure that you are using the same side. And then we can, like I said, line it up exactly where it was the last time on the tree and then punch it out. So now that tree is exactly where I wanted it to be. I want to be able to stamp the tree in the, the void that we have here. Now I could, because they're photopolymer, it's very easy to just um, line it up with a regular block, but say I don't wanna do that, I wanna make sure that I'm, my placement is a little more precise. I want to make this fit perfectly in here so I can mess around with it and look at it and decide okay you know that's exactly where I want it to be and then I close it and pick it up so now when I go to stamp that tree it's going to go right where I want it to go let's even adhere this down That way we know it's not gonna move. So once we place it, that's exactly where it goes. And then I just want it to be a shade on shade. So I'm gonna do shaded spruce ink on shaded spruce cardstock. give it some gentle tap 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 again I don't want to press very hard because I don't want a halo around there and there we go there's our perfectly placed tree so now I can go back and put the Stampin dimensionals on And there we go, there's our card. Now that's the outside. I also wanna do the inside. I never leave any of my insides blank. 
Oh, and if you saw this, I don't know if you did, but this is a piece of acetate where I've just drawn a plus across the middle. And this is if I wanted to center something in a layer. So this is a perfect layer for the size of a card. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. And so if I wanted to place something perfectly centered rather than trying to eyeball it, I can lay that over and find my exact middle. So that's what that was, in case you were wondering. Back to our stamping. Okay, so I have um, another sentiment. And again, I could do this with the other plate in the Stamparatus, or I can just use a standard block. And then I'm going to take this other tree that comes out of the same set. And I just want a little bit of an accent of the tree in the bottom. I don't really want it to be overwhelming, so I'm kind of letting it hang off the bottom and hang off the side. And so that's just giving me an accent. So there's the inside of our card. Now we also, on this card, decorated the envelope. And this is easy to do. So since I have it hang off of the edge, I want to make sure that the envelope is closed so that it can go that way. And then I can open it and hang off this way because if it was closed, I would obviously get the bottom half of the tree under here. And then I have another sentiment out of this same set that says North Pole Delivery. And so I'm going to place that right in the center. So there we have a decorated envelope to go with our Christmas card. So see how quick and easy that was? What did that take us? 15 minutes. And I went slow. <laughs> So you can see that this would be super easy to do if you were looking to make some Christmas cards kind of last minute. So again, I want to thank you for joining me and remind you that if you place an order through my store, um, not only will you get the customer appreciation PDF with a $30 or more order, but you will also get on my list for getting a copy of the new mini catalog. This will be coming out in January um, when we start Celebration, which is Stampin' Up's biggest sale of the entire year. And anybody who places an order with me automatically gets on a list and gets a copy of the catalog delivered to them as well, because I wanna make sure that all of my customers have that in their hot little hands. Because it's always more fun to look at the printed version than it is to try to look at it online, although it is available online. But um, we all know how fun it is to play with the paper version. So again, thank you for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed today's card and you give it a try. Thanks. Bye.